Rona Man here. Got Chris Cantu here, live hey. from Bangkok. Yeah. All right. Hey, fuck, man. We're fucking, are we like fucking? This is awesome, man. <laughs> this is awesome. You know, it's, it's very rare that you meet a like-minded individuals. And then even if you have to travel halfway across the world, but once you get there, man, it's so worth it. It's so awesome. So yeah, uh, I, I'm excited, man. I've spent the last year pretty much by myself, like doing my thing. So right, to be able to communicate right. with other guys and have great conversations and oh, just learning new stuff from you guys. Right, so like, right. I'm totally glad that I you know decided to come out here and, and open up to the world. Right. It's so different. Like when you're standing here and then my, my old roommate standing there, yeah. It's a very different conversation right. and like it just goes a different direction, right? Right. Yeah. So I think what, what we'll kind of talk about maybe leads into this and I'll, and I'll let you kick it yeah. off. But, um, but little Go by ahead. little, yeah. m more men are questioning their beliefs. They're questioning what they've been told to believe and what their role in the world was. And as we continue to question these things, that, that is, in my opinion, taking the red pill is, you know, are you going to snap out of the matrix and really question, well, why am I... You know, am I a Christian? Why am I a Christian? Why, you know, why do I have this kind of car? What, you know, why do I believe the things that I believe? Was I engineered to believe that? Or, or now that we're questioning it, we're realizing that a lot of the stuff we were led to believe was a misdirection or, or an outright lie. So as we're questioning these things like financial instruments versus Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, like these new technologies, these new ways of thinking that are coming out. Um, so when you do question your own reality and then you meet with other like-minded individuals that are questioning their reality, that's just like a beautiful thing that's taking place. And I think more of us are waking up all over the world in unison. Right, right. Yeah. I even think of it not as a, even an insidious thing. Like mm -hmm. there's one way to look at it is like people are controlling the media and this and that. But if you look at this diagram here, like basically where you're born is, is your religion. So if you're born in Israel, you're Jewish, right? If you're born in Saudi Arabia, you're Muslim. America, you're Christian, right? And so we take on, this isn't like one, if it wasn't several countries, then you could say it's kind of like controlling us, right? Mm. But it's like all these religions in different places. And then whoever is there just takes on that religion. Right. And, I, and so our beliefs, like, are they even fucking ours? Like, I would say like probably 90% of your beliefs are not even yours. Mm, They're right. just whoever was around you and then you kind of adapted to it. Mm -hmm. And it's super embarrassing to accept that. Like, it's like mm -hmm. me, you know, how could that fucking happen to me? You know, but it's like, if you look at human beings, if you look at the numbers, mm -hmm. that's the way we operate. Right. Like that is our, cause we're, we, we have to breathe, right? There's certain right. weaknesses we have, right? Right. You know what I mean? We can't take a, 10 bullets in the chest, right? Right. <laughs> and, and like, so we're, we're, we're human beings, but it's like, how do we, how do, we uh, do the best we can with what we got, right? So right. We're, I, I was just thinking before, is like we're like fucking stem cells. We're like these magic stem cells. You put them in any part of your body and they become that, that cell, right? So if they're in your heart, you put them in the heart, you put them in the throat, you put them in the hair, and then they become hair, they become heart. You know, they just grow into whatever they are. And I think that's more like what the way human beings are. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, we kind of talked about it as, uh, you know, coming up through the decade or through not decades but through the years thousands of years of evolution that we are tribal beings that we've gotten together in tribes as almost like a self-preservation uh, method and so we kind of carry that on like with the with the uh, image that you're seeing now like the tribe of Israel and, and always following that certain Judaism or the, the tribes of you know the Saudi Arabia you know, Middle East area mm -hmm. all following you know Muslim you know uh, the Quran you know same thing so um, so I think we do that almost instinctually. It's built into our DNA to form tribes and to form these, uh, these groups to protect e ourselves from other rival tribes or, or you know, whatever you know, dangers that we pose. But, but now in the information age, as, as we're, you know, technology has flattened out the world and, and we can you know, jump on a plane and 15 hours later be across, you know, halfway across the world, um, I think it's important to question your beliefs and question, you know, if I'm, if I was from North America and I'm Christian, well, why is that? You know, what led me to believe that? What, you know, what were the things that happened in my life? What community was I But it's, it's going to seem normal to you. That's right. the thing. Right. Even if you think about it, you're going to think, well, you know, I would have thought about everything and I would have decided, you know, to mm -hmm. be like this, right? Because 
because I'm smart, you know. Right. It's we like all think we're, yeah. we have in control of our own lives, right? But then we look at it like this, it's like, well, what, you know, why is a guy in Israel that, that's born, you know, why, why isn't he a Christian? Or why isn't he Hindu? Why yeah. doesn't he think, you know, oh, I'm going to be a Hindu, right? Right. Uh, there's, what, there's another way to look at it is that all religions are just so dumb, made right. up stories that you right. just kind of, if you hear them enough, I think it all kind of um, you make, you it believe goes them, to the right? same point. Uh, like eventually all these religions, Judaism, Muslim, you know, they all kind of uh, end up at the same point for me at least and everyone has their own you know beliefs but um for me just the the natural order of god man and woman and, and i've talked a lot about this you know in, in my broadcast but um but getting back to that natural order versus oh i'm jewish jewish oh i'm a muslim oh i'm this because they're almost like uh rabbit holes that you go down that you know oh you know that day that comes up that the light bulb goes on it's like you know what i want to question my beliefs there's going to be 10 people there saying, oh, great, you're going to question it. Let me show you what we have to offer. We have a new set. Thing. We have a new we set a new for thing. you. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you don't believe right this thing. set, we got a whole new set for you. Yeah, right? you yeah. Know? Oh, you don't like uh, the Democrats. Well, let me, I got something for you. We it's got another party for, for you, for my Republicans friend. or Libertarians. <laughs> just come on over. We're glad to have you. You know, and so you go from rabbit hole to rabbit hole to rabbit hole. And you have to kind of go through that process to really find the truth for yourself. Well, I, I do it differently, and I talked mm. about it on TFM. I mm. I just throw everything away, and I think I start from like nothing. Like this apartment had nothing before, mm. and I just said, okay, what do I need in here? Do and then I walk around every day, and then all of a sudden I realize, man, I need a cup. Mm -hmm. Like I need a fucking cup, right? And go then I'll get cup. something for a cup, or I'll say, you know, I need like some kind of bucket type of thing mm -hmm. that will hold water because the water rain filled the balcony with water so I needed something to fill it to catch it right mm -hmm. so I just kind of look and then and then piece by piece I get mm. the things I need instead of just saying okay what does a house have it has all this shit in it right I'll right. get all that shit then I'll probably be covered right I'll right. just I just kind of go just one piece of, yeah. yeah as I needed it I just so okay I need this one piece you know and then just just piece by piece and that works for me like a lot better because right. otherwise like you know I, I I really end up with a lot of stuff I don't need in it there's no way to stop it because it's like right you know, it's just like a, it's almost like a belief system. A house is almost like a belief system. But yeah. you know what I was thinking? There was something really interesting that happened to me. I, I used to, well, I go to 12 step groups, right? And, mm -hmm. and like each group, and it's just, just follow me on this, nothing to do with the, the groups. It could be any social group, but they have like a format, right? Mm -hmm. So there's like right. a speaker meeting, there's like a, there's like a, a step meeting, there's all these different types of meetings, right? And some meetings you read shit, other ones, there's a guy talking. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, that's called the format, right? Now the format is voted by the group, right? Mm -hmm. So they vote, and, it's, and I, what I noticed over the years is, once a meeting has a f format, mm -hmm. it is fucking really hard to change it. Right, people don't like Nobody change. wants to change the format. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is the format was randomly selected, because I started a lot of meetings, mm -hmm. and I just kind of like randomly started a format. Right. And, but then once that was set, right. every, it was almost like, like, it was like the Greek, version of the Bible or something now right. is the way I said it was now right. all of a sudden super stone important in stone. Yeah. And these are the same guys who wouldn't like me in real life because they didn't know I started the meeting right. 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Right. They, they had no idea. Now they're just going to this meeting. They don't know who started it. Right. Yeah. And, but if, if, if they actually saw it was me, they'd say, Oh, you know, he's flawed, you know, we'll go with a new format, but yeah. they think it's from some important person. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's it's kind of similar with this. Yeah, uh, exactly. This and it, well, here was, what was really interesting right? yeah. is there was a dude, and he, he figured out a hack to this system. So what he did was, is every format is written up on a piece of paper that you read in the meeting. Mm -hmm. So what he did was, instead of voting, he went on his own and changed the format, typed up a new one, mm -hmm. like a total bullshit one that he thought was good, mm -hmm. and then he put it into the box for the group. Mm -hmm. So then the next meeting, the, the, the secretary just grabbed that paper, mm -hmm. and he threw the other one away. Mm -hmm. So then he just started reading it, and the secretary... It's so mindless. Hmm. Nobody noticed. noticed it. it was yeah. a whole new format. Right. So he changed the format of all the meetings right. without asking anybody, without right. doing any votes, and without anybody noticing. Right. And I was sitting there in the meeting, and I said, "I said, you guys, this is a different format." And everybody was like, "Oh, is it? I don't know." You know, I. Wow. And then finally, like one guy's like, "I think this, yeah, the new format." And right. I said, "Did we vote this in?" And everybody's like, "We must have." You know, I guess so. You know, <laughs> I wasn't here. I don't know. Yeah. You know. And then, like, everybody was just kind of fighting against me. And I finally, I finally talked to somebody who said, I said, there's one guy I suspected. So I said, what does that guy do? Like, everybody does something in the group, right. like some kind of service. And I said, what does he do? He goes, oh, he types the formats. 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, motherfucker. So then I, <laughs> then I, 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 yeah, I got all my friends together. And I said, and I realized he had changed them to the way he likes meetings because right. he, he likes meetings with a lot of reading. Right. Whereas I prefer, prefer meetings with a lot of talking. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I don't want to just read some book. I can read on myself, my own. Right. Right? You so want to hear stories and yeah. testimony. Yeah, I want to or... like interaction, right? People. Right. Would, but either way, that's fine because that's just my opinion. But the thing is, is he was not doing the, the group thing. He, he hacked it and he would yeah. just go and type them in. And, I, and I, so I called him out on it yeah. and he was super pissed off about it. But the thing is, hit him aside, the interesting thing was if you just force change on people, they just mm-hmm. accept it. Mm-hmm. It's right. like fine. But right. if you try to change someone, if you from a Hindu to a Christian, right. it, you'll fight it against it for all your fucking right. worth. You're like, right. no man, I believe in this. The reason why is this and this, and right. you know, it's like, what are you doing? You're just fighting against change, right? Right. How, how can we change ourselves, or how can we, like, realize how much bullshit is in our minds? Like, right. What, right. what do you think? Like, what, well, what? you mentioned a great example of the house, and and the way to be, I think, truly is to have an empty house. And then add on as as you build, but the problem is in in my own testimony, the way I was raised in you know in San Antonio, Texas, and and basically I was raised with the full house, and we need a dishwasher, we need this, we need this, we need all this furniture, we need like that's the way I was raised, you know, growing up. Is yeah, that, that's what a house is. You need is. a full time job. All this you bullshit. You need yeah. a nine to five. You need the house totally decked out with furniture, mirror, you know. And, and I think it was because I was raised yeah. by a single mom. So no, no, mo- this is like totally normal. Everybody right. does this. Well, okay, yeah. E- even in all these countries here, they all do it. That, that, right. This is like a common thing. Common thing against yeah. everything. Um, and so what I had to do was start going into my own house and removing things and being my own mover of to get the the house bare enough to where I could actually figure things out for my own right. and then start adding in, okay, what do I want in my life? I want to, you know, I want a stream of revenue that I don't have to go to a corporate cubicle job. So how do I do, you know, figure that out? Or, you know, how do I get in shape and, and, and you know, f- feel healthy every day, feel light, you know, have, have good health. Okay. Let me figure that out. Cause that wasn't part of my house growing up for sure. But it's something that I had to kind of go and find for myself. Right, so right. Uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make is you have to deprogram yourself. And, and by doing in, in order to do that, you have to question your beliefs of why, you know, you believe certain things because of your upbringing, because, of, you know, the community that you were raised in, you know, they had you believe those things. Um, and, and I think that's the difference between <laughs> the blue pill and the red pill is when you start asking questions. But then you got to keep going. I think even even Buddha said, you know, there's only two mistakes or, that you can make when seeking the truth is not starting and not going all the way. And so I think a lot of people have maybe even good quote, start yeah. that uh, process, but then they go down these rabbit holes and they never really get to where their house is empty enough to 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 be have that clarity and right. then say, okay, well, what do I want for my life? I know I only have X amount of years you know, to, to, to live, how do I want to live those years? Do I want to live them with the full house that I didn't even pick the furniture? They were just, it was just kind of given to me. Those beliefs were kind of given to me and expected and assumed that I would just believe them. Or now that I have a free mind, you know, how do I want to structure this house? Do I really want furniture? Or do I just want to have, you know, sleep, sleep on a mat? Uh, you know, that's good for me. You know? Right, right. And so kind of figure it out for yourself. Well, what, um, let's go close to home here. Yeah. What beliefs that most MGTOWs have or are common that you don't believe? Is there anything you can think of um, that, that just doesn't I, jive with you? I mean, even what I've seen on Twitter a lot recently with uh, you know some of the guys that are that are in the manosphere um, that are leaning towards traditional conservative and saying, "Oh, you have to go get a wife, and, and you're and you're not leaving your legacy, and you're not being a are real man." That? Yeah, there's like a thing uh, upstream Twitter, and it's like a bunch of you know like uh, self improvement type guys yeah. building their brand, you know, writing ebooks and stuff, and they've kind of taken a tangent and to call out other guys that maybe talk about the modern woman or you know how different aspects that they oh. see wrong in the world, yeah, um, and, and questioning them and calling them out, and they, and and. Uh, so a, a portion of the manosphere is kind of calling that out is like a weakness when in fact it is true strength to question your beliefs and to, to stand in your own truth right. what that means to you and so I think one thing that uh, you know that I was raised to believe is that you have to 
get married and, and have 2.5 kids and, and you have to have a mortgage and mm. you have to, you know, so all these things that makes you a quote unquote good man, a worthy man versus, you know, oh, just the being fucking a good, good man. man. Yeah. Oh, the good man. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I tell you, fuck, that's a good one. When I was home, I went home for a while. And I was walking through my neighborhood, and I got friendly with this guy mm-hmm. down the street as this uh, limousine service thing. So we ended up, he had these cool cars, you know, funky old cars. So mm-hmm. I started talking to him and stuff. And I'd come by, you know, walking. And then he, and then he said, uh, some guy drove by. And then, he, and then he said something really interesting. He said, oh, that guy's a good guy. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, cool, you know. Because mm-hmm. I, I knew him from high school, actually. He goes, that guy's a good guy. And, then, and I didn't say anything. And then he said, he gets up every morning... He passes by here at seven o'clock, and he comes by every night at six o'clock, and 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 like basically he was saying that's a good guy. Mm. That that was his belief. Like I didn't say anything. I just let him continue. Right. 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 Well, what is a good guy? It's this guy who drives by every morning at a certain time, right. and comes by every night at the same time. And I, I I didn't stop talking to the guy after that, but I did slow down because I realized his belief system right. was. Uh, that you a man should not be at home in the daytime, mm-hmm. and a lot of people believe this. Right, it's a big problem. So you're a loser. If oh, you yeah. Don't have a job. If it, you yeah. don't have a W yeah. two corporate. Oh, job, oh, big know? time. And uh, you know, a lot of people who have jobs they assume that if you had money, everybody would change their opinion. But that's not true. Mm-hmm. I have a friend who just sold his business for ten million dollars cash mm-hmm. to a very reputable company. Like it's a full legit deal. He got mm-hmm. the cash, mm-hmm. and uh, he still has this waiting period where they right. could refund some of it. But either way, he got the 10 million bucks. Right. And the thing is, his wife does not, he, he sits at home now and plays golf and stuff, right? right. But his wife is super unhappy and, be, and being super cunty now. Right. And the thing is, the reason why is because he's at home all the time. Right. And so he said he feels like he is almost... Uh, a loser in her eyes now. Mm. He just got ten million dollars. What the fuck? Yeah. How fucking yeah. crazy is yeah. that? Yeah. He built a business for for almost thirty years, sold the business for ten million cash, and his wife feels like he's you know because she probably subconsciously believes this, right? Right. But let's not. I don't want to bag on her too much because I think right. we're all like her this. conditioning. Uh, yeah. Was that a man goes exactly. Off and- she, she's stuck with if that. a guy's at home man he's a loser in right. her mind if he just brought it's, in 10 million he's still a loser. it's, it's like where you go out and do something like right. you know just go do something right? right she doesn't really want any more money but she just doesn't want him always around right you know and Wonders. it's like yeah and like that's like a mindset that people have and like when you work online it's one of the hardest things to break right is yeah. like you know and especially for me because i don't like to show people what i have right. so i'm going to keep it private like i don't like to let you know so the thing is is People assume the worst. Some people, right. other people assume that you're hiding millions, billions, <laughs> right. trillions. You know, yeah. but but like that, that's more about them. But either way, there's both spectrum, right? So if you don't, if you don't show everything you have, then people go into this like uh, assumption. For themselves. Yeah, they make yeah. it up, and then it's like they think, oh, okay, this guy is this or this, and then and then you're kind of like you have this label on you. And unless you tell him exactly what you have, right. that label's gonna stand and he's gonna tell other people. Right. And so part of being like, I, for me, being a black box is to be fine with that. Right. Some guy is telling a total lie about me, but he doesn't know it's a lie. Right. And it, it, but it's more to do with where his mindset was, why it, this lie is so fucked up, because it's what he thinks about. Nobody would be at home, nobody would be walking down the street, you know, just cruising around without a job, Right. And have you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's a loser. Right. That is a loser. That is that is in his mind. There's been no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. And, and so, like, I think part of it is just accepting the fact that people will think you're a winner or a loser. Right. And just accepting it, you know, just right. saying they don't they don't you know, know me. Well, I know for me, like uh, putting this content out and, and showing my face, using my real name, speaking yeah. truth, um, the assumptions and the different things, that, the labels that people try to put on you. Um, you know, I, uh, I think someone on Twitter says this. Um, um, it is a superpower to not care what people think about you. Like really? It's really yeah. a superpower. Like people have such a hard time you know, uh, having uh, the judgments against them and believing them. And they, oh, they must be true because I've heard this from a couple times. But then you don't question their belief systems and, and where, you know, you always got to consider the source, right? Consider the source. 
And right. so um, I've I, learned that. I, I do it to myself too, by the way. Yeah. I just thought of that. I call myself a loser if I'm at home. Really? Like, oh yeah, I have to fight against it too. Right, right, right. Because my it's dad told me that. Everybody told yeah. me that. Like, you're a loser if you're not going right. to work. Right. You know, it's like my brain is going to tell me the same thing, right? Right. I have, you to, have to break out of that. It's not easy. Right, right. <laughs> Even for me. It's so thick. It's so, the programming yeah. is so thick. Um, but when you get to a point where you truly don't care, and even sometimes people comment or something and try to, you know, dr do drive by trolling on my, on my channel about certain videos and, and you take it in, but then you remember, Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm free. I don't, I, I'm me who I choose to be, not what anyone labels me or thinks about me. So right. it's almost like a force field that you, that you put around yourself when you can truly know yourself and and be comfortable with that and and even if you know you can take feedback i mean people leave stuff on my channel you know i'll read it I'll, you know i may delete it but i mean i'll like i'll take all criticism good and bad because right. that helps me form how i think of myself uh but at the same time if someone comes in and tries to say oh you're this or you're a loser or you're you know you don't you know you just you need to find a good woman or something yeah. like that it's like okay cool like i know me and, and, and I have that force field, so it kind of bounces off me. Right. I just thought of something like a different, a little bit different, but important. Same kind of thing mm -hmm. is, is that your belief, if, if you don't learn how to uh, change your beliefs about mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. about life, what will happen is you set yourself up for failure. Because I remember in high school, I was playing soccer with this. We were at this, like it was a church function, and we were playing soccer with these old guys. Mm -hmm. So we're in high school, we're like running around, you know, and we were all in soccer teams, you know, so, and there was these older guys who were going to play with us. It's going to be this thing. So the, the game went like, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. And some guy grabbed his heart yeah. and then fell down, had a heart attack. Wow. So the ambulance came, took him away. Yeah. And then we kept playing. Right. right. And then another guy had a heart attack. <laughs> Two dudes what? had heart attacks in this game. No joke. Wow. Think of the odds of that, right? That's like lightning strikes. Twice. The, and the same ambulance driver came by <laughs> and picked up somebody else. Wow. And then we quit the game, right? Because right. it was like, we realized. Don't but but, but why did those guys keep playing like that is probably because they still thought of themselves as young men. Mm -hmm. And they were really enjoying it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think a lot of life is, is also realizing that you have seasons in your life. Right. And you change. Right. And, then, and then and accepting that instead of... In, you know, so there's a belief like a religion and there's like a belief of what you should do. There's a belief of what you need in your house, what you need in your life. And there's also a belief of who you are. And that belief has to change because I, if I try to be the same guy I was in my 20s, because I, 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 I could do it. Like, for example, when it comes to like I dated like multiple women, right. I, you know, zillion. So I could do that now, but it doesn't make me happy anymore. Right. Like right. I, something changed. Maybe it was just like. Too many girls, and I just don't really don't want to do that anymore. I like right. it doesn't doesn't interest me, right. which is weird because most guys, if you give them the chance, they will. But right. somebody who's been through it a lot, they're just like you evolve. Yeah, like yeah, like a difference. Yeah, it change. You know, yeah. like I have a friend. He fought in, in in Vietnam, and he never would want to kill an animal. Mm -hmm. Like he won't go hunting, or he doesn't want anything that's gonna because he shot a lot of humans. Right. Right. So you like depending on what you've been through, you're gonna change. But if you try to if you can't change your belief, you're always going to think, oh, a man has to do this. Right. Like he has to be strong or he has to be this or he has to do that. And then it's like you put yourself at risk because you, one, you can like die of a fucking heart attack. Right. right. Or, or you could just like live an unhappy life. Right. That's possible right. too. Right. Because you're like when you're older, you're just not the same. You, the same things don't make you happy. You have to right. like meet other guys. Right. Talk to them. I mean, I think the one of the key things is staying as young as possible, like right. physically. Like that's right. so important. Right, 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 right. But, Health and all yeah, that. Yeah, but yep. you might look young, but still your mind is different and your state is different. So you need yes. to also, you need to also, like it's a mix, right? Like right. you want to hang out with young guys, you want to hang out with older guys, and you also, and you want to be, you know, whatever you want to be at the same time is like taking in the wisdom right. of other human beings who say, you know, at your age, I would recommend not doing this right. or being careful with that. Right. Or do you think you've taken enough chances with that or are you still comfortable? You know, right. that's why I stopped motorcycle racing mm -hmm. because somebody came up to me and basically said, you know, you're going to die if you continue this. Right. I was street racing, you know, in Japan and, and I had done it for many years safely because I was a very good rider. Right. But 
He was right. If I continued that, I was going to die. The odds are. Yeah, I was, I, yeah I was racing serious. I was yeah. racing very fast, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like one mistake and it was over kind of thing. So, right. And I just always pulled it off, right? So I always felt like, oh, I'll always pull it off. Right. And then finally I said, God, get out of here. And then I, I kind of like, I went to myself after he said, this is a good friend of mine. Right. He was actually, he was like really successful too. I think that's why I was able to listen to him. Mm. He was president of like a major consulting firm. Okay. He, was, he was also one of my clients. And he said to me, you're going to die if you continue this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and I, I went home and I thought about it. And I thought, I, I, I really like changed in one day yeah. because, yeah, I really did. That's probably did. a big change because you're, it was a huge that was change. your image, that was who you were. Yeah, right, you know? yeah, it really was. Yeah, I was proud of my skill right. and everything. But what I did was I, I looked at my life and I said, wait a second, you've taken a million chances with your life. And is, isn't that enough? Like, don't right. you feel like, don't you feel like there's nothing really there for you anymore? Like, mm -hmm. like some things I need to do still, right? right? I need to climb a mountain. I need to do this. I need to, you know, like there's certain things I still want to do, but the old things that I've already done, like there's, a, it's just like you've How done them, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I've already done yeah. them. Like yeah. if I'm not happy with this, like I must have a mental problem because I raced like mad. Like I, I didn't need to prove anything to anybody. I was like, right. and then I all of a sudden realized, oh my gosh, I'm in one of these turning points in life. Like I don't <laughs> right. need to do this anymore. Right. Me, not right. other people. I, I like, I don't regret it. I'm right. super happy. I did I it. I bet that day was the day that it just snapped. And then from then on, you weren't a <coughs> motorbike you know, well, racer. Well, it's or true. Did it what happen? I did was, I'll tell you, that's an interesting story. I, what I did was, he recommended a psychiatrist. I've never oh, been wow. to one before or since. Okay. But I went to a psychiatrist one time, mm -hmm. and I bargained him down to a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bargained him. Yeah. I bargained the guy because I never go to these fucking. You're like, dude, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not fucking no, I said, look, I'll give you a hundred bucks, <laughs> and I'll do one time, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. And the dude's like, all right. Yeah. You know. And so then I was like, you know, he's like, you're the first guy who's ever bargained. I'm like. <laughs> You know, that's great. you know, I got, I'm like half Chinese, right? I live yeah. in China, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, there's always a bargain. Yeah, I got to get a bargain, you know? Yeah. So either way, so then I went to him and then, and then he went through his psychologist saying, and he traced it back to this time when my, basically there was like domestic violence going on in my house and I was super scared of, you know, getting beat up and like mm. of watching everything happen. Mm -hmm. And I was cowering in the corner, but I was trying to help my mom and mm -hmm. all this kind of very traumatic day that I remembered when I was a kid. Mm. And he said, you probably turned off your emotion at that moment. Mm. And when you race, you're trying to feel scared. Mm. He said, you don't feel scared when you race, wow. do you? Yeah. I'm like, no, not at right. all. He's right. like, you're looking, he's like, it. that's not normal. He right. goes, do you realize that, that that's not a normal thing is to not have a feeling like that? Right. You're like, your body's at risk of dying, but you don't feel scared. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was kind of proud of that, like ice cold. Right. You know? Right, right, you right, know? Right. But then, then he said, you know, that's not normal, you know? Right. And he said, you know, what you need to do is you need to learn to, you, you need to, well, first thing is like, once I realized it came from that one incident, right. then I kind of like, it all changed for me that moment because right. I realized a lot of things about myself is like one thing is I remembered that day and I went into the room, you know, I was trying to help my mom and hmm. I was thinking nobody else went in. Mm -hmm. Like I was trying to help my mom. Mm -hmm. I was pretty proud of that. Right. Cause I didn't remember. I remembered the violence, but I remember the, what I had done. Right. So once I, once I analyzed, I was like, that's pretty cool. I mean, right. I was too small to do anything, right. 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 but I was trying. Right. Right. So it, it, it kind of freed you. Yeah. It freed me because it, also, I knew more about myself, and I, I just thought, when I see a little kid, you never know what they're thinking. Right, right, right. Um, something you mentioned about, well, another thing I think you pointed out, not only is not caring what other people think a superpower, but to be able to change your own thinking and, and make that change and, and, and see the information in front of you, but not be so tied to old conditioning to not be able to change and, and change your life. And I think... Um, you know, in the United States, we go to middle school, high school, college, and all those phases kind of train you how to be an American and how to be in the matrix. And you guys, you know, 40, 50 years old wearing some guy's jersey and cheering every Sunday for a football team. It's because right. he did that. He played some football in middle school and high school and right. watched college. And then he gets out into the real world and gets into his corporate matrix job. And he's still following that conditioning, you know, at 40 years old, putting on some guy's jersey and, and watching the game, drinking beers. He doesn't have the strength mentally to question, why am I wearing this guy's jersey? Why am I so, why is my identity wrapped up into this 
sports team where literally the same game happens every year. It means nothing. It doesn't push the world forward. You know, it just, but, but here I am being a full supporter. So, so I think a lot of those people that continue to think the same thing, they may have questions and may question, but they don't have the strength to, to really step outside of that for fear of, you know, ridicule or, oh, you're not a, you know, Broncos fan anymore. What's yeah. your week, you know, or you're not a cowboy, you know, what's wrong? Is everything okay? Kind of, that's how tight that social uh, invisible cage keeps right. you on the plantation. And you, so, yeah, you know, as I say, is you know, now we're here in Bangkok, you just got here, right? So yeah. now when you, that story is a great story. Go down, we go to today, we'll go down to Sukhumvit, right? Which is the main part of town and watch all the European guys because when you, when you see a guy like wearing an American sock, uh, like a football uniform, it right. doesn't really affect you because you're just like, it's so normal. It's like a fish in water, right? right? But when you see the British guys and the German guys, everybody wearing all their jerseys, yeah, uh, they look, I, I, they, I mean, I sorry to say, you know, I mean, we do too. I look stupid. I mean, this is, we're all admitting our own faults right. Right, with everything, right? right? But when I see them, I, I just see this like automatron. And you see these guys with these like these sports jerseys of Sweden or whatever. Right. When it's not from my country, I can really see how pathetic it looks. Like mm -hmm. some guy's in his forties, he's got this like like really bright colored, like very like not good Stand looking out. shirt. Yeah. He doesn't look good in it. Yeah. It, it doesn't fit him right. Like it, yeah. it doesn't look good, but he's like this supporter, obviously. Right. Right. Of this it's team. a coat of armor for him. Yeah. Like a familiarity, a, a comfort zone. But you can really see it when it's not a team you know. Right. Because then it seems really stupid. It's kind of like when I see a Thai, like a Thai movie star. Yeah. It doesn't affect me the same way that like an American Thai, movie star. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like you right. see a Filipino singer is really famous, like in the mall singing or something. Like, and you think, <laughs> why is everybody so stoked on that guy or that girl? Right. But then, but then you, when it's your city guys or whatever, you think right. they're great. You know, right. Right. like, right. so that one, one thing helps me is to watch other people's matrices. Right. And that helps me to question my matrix. Like, did I even like that girl in high school that was this famous person? Like, Right. Well, did I even do I even believe in political parties like I don't even believe in political yeah. parties at all yeah I, all I believe in is issues right so like should you should they tear down this one thing this beautiful like nature area and put a strip mall right you know I, I'll have an opinion on that right? right or I'll have an opinion on should we fund like a mission to Mars right right but I, I don't like it's an issue right right but as far as like a party or something like yeah to me they're all like clowns like, right and all of them like <laughs> yeah I don't want to like you know what I was just going to say about the political parties? I, I, I have a unique opinion on polit politics. I think like, like um, okay, imagine you need a new cell phone, right? You lose your cell phone today. So yeah. you need a new cell phone. So Chris lost his cell phone. So then he says to me, he says, I'm going to nominate you. I'm going to vote for you mm -hmm. to be the new cell phone buyer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you have the right to tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. So you say, you know, I really want like a, you know, like a, uh, Huawei Mate 10, you know, it's like mm -hmm. awesome phone. Mm -hmm. And you try to convince me to go buy the phone that you want for you, mm -hmm. right? That's politics. Right. And, and all, not only that, but I can decide everything else too. Right. So not just the phone, but I also your decide your, your taxes, right. your this, your parking, you know, yeah. like uh, whether we're going to give money to a bunch of people somewhere else, whether we're going to go kill a bunch of people. I get to decide all that. And the yeah. only thing you can do is like it basically anoint me as your like, go between to go right. make these decisions for you. And the only thing you can do, your only power is to write me a letter saying, Hey, listen, I really wanted the Huawei 10. Like I, I fucking, I it's had, like writing to Santa Claus. Yeah. Like, like Santa, this is what yeah, I wanted like, for Christmas. Like imagine you're across the room. They're writing a letter to me over here. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're like, you know, like, Hey Ronan, like I really want a Huawei 10. I told you like, yeah, why the please. fuck did you get me a fucking Apple? Like I didn't right. want that. You know, I don't like iOS. Like I don't like use it yet. And I'd be like, I wouldn't even read your letter because there'd be too many people, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't have time for that, Chris. You know, fuck that <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, you yeah. know, fuck all those. There's 10,000 <laughs> letters every day coming yeah. in, right? Yeah. That's politics to me. And yeah. so it's not like I'm not against or pro anybody. I just think that the, all I care about is a certain issue. I do care about issues. So like, you right. know, should you develop this area or should this happen? Or should they fund uh, artificial intelligence programming for kids? So that guys learn stuff that actually they can use in life, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Like I really mm -hmm. care about stuff like that. But <laughs> other stuff, I just you know, like I don't want anybody to be. I don't want any fucking Ronald McDonald type of, uh, you know, C C Colonel Sanders type of asshole mm -hmm. to be the guy deciding shit for me. Right. You know that that's politics to me in today's right. age. Right. It, it, and it doesn't matter who it is, and I don't mean they're I don't mean they're clowns. I mean it's like anytime you can't decide what you want, if you're like 
just think today, all day, I can be your, 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 your representative. Right. So we'll go to the restaurant and you say, representative, I want a hamburger. And I'll right. be like, get him a tuna sandwich. <laughs> exactly. You know? And then you'll be like, I told you hamburger. Like, I, I, you know, I just, you know, <laughs> you, all you can do is like vote, right? And yeah, then I'll like yeah. go ahead and like implement But how it. many people, and, and we're kind of talking about that, but how many people <laughs> think that they really are in control and that they really, and that that tuna sandwich is a hamburger, <laughs> if they just think hard enough, <laughs> if they just believe hard enough that this is the right thing. And, and I think that's why uh, that, that's the red pill and blue pill kind of just right. kind of wrapped up. Is Hell like, yeah. You know, got to question your beliefs. You got to first not care what other people think, but right. then be strong enough mentally to admit, okay, this is why I was thinking that thing. This is why I was bike racing is because I tied it to this thing. And, and now I've traced it back. Yeah, because it was so the most I'm exciting free. thing that made me right. feel something. You know, right. I really felt something when I was racing. Right. I mean, I did. I did afterwards, you know. I'd right. be like, come down. I'd be like all shaky, you know. Right. And in the moment, I wasn't. But afterwards, I was right. super. Like a fight. Right. You, know? you felt alive. Yeah. You, know? you felt yeah. alive. I think a lot of men struggle with that same thing, but go about it different ways. Like for me, I know that right. when I drank a lot and I felt like shit the next yeah. day, that at least I was feeling something. Right. You know, but right. then I would like medicate all the pain <laughs> from yeah. just drinking so much. And then feel something the next day, but at least I could tie it to being hung over because I drank too much. Right. But really the deeper, like 10 feet down reason was because I wanted to hurt myself because, uh, because of not feeling good enough and stemming from my mom and dad and right, you know, that mostly right. my dad kind of thing. But now yeah. it's like, I don't feel like I need to hurt myself or drink or, or if I stumble or something, then yeah. that, I think, Oh, I'm just hurting myself. Like right, it doesn't affect right. the world. It, you know, I don't, I'm not like a, a fighter drunk yeah, or I'm not yeah. like, you know, violent or try to hurt anyone. I just hurt myself. But if I didn't trace all that back as to why, Oh, it's cause my dad, you know, didn't show me love or attention. And, and I filled that void with alcohol from a very early age. Right. And it was always a comfort zone. Ah, okay, I could just drink and party and be this kind of social guy. Um, and then the aftermath, the hangover. You know, it got to a point where I couldn't even drink anymore because my <laughs> hangovers were so bad. But then I, it took a while for me to see that I was just hurting myself and to trace it back and, and strong enough to make a mental shift that says, okay, if, if I do drink, I'm not going to hurt myself. It's going to be, you know, to, to be social, to be in the moment, but not because I'm, I'm hurting myself because of this issue that, you know, I kind of figured that part of it out. So it's different. Yeah. And I think a lot of people need to be strong enough to, you know, deal with that uh, question, question, yeah. question, question why you do stuff, question yeah. what you're doing, you know, question, like really question, like not like some bullshit, like question right. the basic things that you do in your life. Right. Like watch yourself driving to work, right. watch yourself eating, right. watch yourself. Who do you call? What do you buy? Right. You know, watch yourself. What for do you a while. pay attention? What websites do you go to and spend and time how long? on? Is it ESPN or is it? YouTube, how to build a blog or how to do something, you know, right, is right, it just pushing yeah. you forward or is it just hurting yourself and, and a waste of your time? I think, I think watching yourself, I can, I can, I can, this last thought here, but mm -hmm. watching yourself is one of the most valuable things you can ever do without any plan to change. Mm -hmm. Just literally Observation. observing yourself. Like, yeah. you know, like when I tried to learn marketing, I had to, the guy told me, I had this, uh, this, uh, mentor and he said, look, just what have you bought? Write down everything you bought, mm -hmm. and then when you bought it, mm -hmm. what time of day, you know, what did you see first, and then what did you decide? And it was really embarrassing. Like it was like not fun to do that actually, right. because I didn't think of myself the way that I kind of came out with buying things, right? So right. what I did was I wrote that down. But then that was like gold for me when I was marketing, right. because I realized that other people are like me, right. and they're also automatrons. Right. You know, they, they trigger. Yeah, know, yeah, triggers yeah. Them. yeah. Yeah. And then they buy this stuff. So I, I learned how to, you by, by watching yourself, you not only um, can improve your life, but you also learn skills that can help you to, uh, in sales mm -hmm. or in, 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 you know, in something in your life that can make you a lot of money too, because mm -hmm. you're not that unique, right? You're, the other people are doing that kind of stuff right. too. So right. you have better understanding. And also you can, obviously, if you have like friends or kids or whatever, you can mentor them better because you understand, okay, Mm -hmm. This is the way people are. Right. This is the way I am. Right. And okay, now this guy, you know, you know, and then you can like it's easier to relate to people too, and and make money too. So yeah, 
man. Cool, man. I like this, man. I like this. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I think uh, just in closing, I mean, uh, to recap is you really have to question all of your beliefs. You have to have a strong enough mindset to be able to change your beliefs if they're not helping you or benefiting you. Mm-hmm. Um, and and, and what, what would you say would be on top of that? My, well, my take is to, is to clean everything out like my apartment. Don't like move into an apartment with nothing. Because I think there's two ways to do it. Chris's way is take things away. So right. you come in the house and you say, I don't need this shit. Go through your clothes and then take things and throw them away. I prefer like coming somewhere with a backpack with like nothing. And then just sitting there like almost like a Buddhist monk and meditating mm. mm-hmm. and looking around at my house every day. What do I need? And then I think of solutions for it because my knee-jerk reaction is to buy something. So when I need to, when I need to wash clothes here the first time, my knee-jerk mm-hmm. reaction is to buy a washing machine. Right. And I did actually wanted to do it because that was the easier way to do it. And I went downstairs and the guy told me where there's like a local laundromat. Mm-hmm. And then they're cheap here. It's not a money thing. I just right. thought, do I really want to have something I have to maintain? Do I want something that's going to, you know, do, I don't, do I want to own a washing machine? I don't want to own a washing machine. Right. I, I'm not into washing machines, you know? Right. You know? So, so then I went downstairs. He told me where it was and it was, he gave me complicated directions. So I'm thinking, oh, now I have to go and find a fucking laundromat. <laughs> so I can just buy a washing machine. But I said, okay. Just go try to follow his directions. I went down there, and then I realized it was surprisingly easy. It's like a dollar for a load. I can just drop them in there. There's a restaurant right next to it where I love to eat anyway. So it takes about an hour to eat and walk. You know, so I just drop my clothes. I go eat. I work on my laptop a little bit. I pick up the clothes. I come back here. I don't have a washing machine. And if I have to move tomorrow, it's one less thing that I didn't need. So for me, it's like more like just go to a place where you have nothing. Like I, I, I only use bar soap. Right. Like I have no shampoo, right. I have no, uh, I have no conditioner. Laundry or uh, dishwasher detergent. No, you just, just no. I use I use a bar soap for yeah. everything. Yeah. The it only works. two, yeah. yeah. The only two things I have, like that, my roommate left that. I don't even know what that is, but yeah. uh, the guy just moved out. But yeah. basically, what I what I use is two things. I like to have uh, detergent mm-hmm. from the clothes mm-hmm. because that works for cleaning the floors. Mm-hmm. And, and if I have a stain, it really works to clean my shoes and stuff. So mm-hmm. like that cl- works for everything in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Is like you know the, the, the what's that called? Uh, I can't even think in English. The washing powder, right? Uh, uh, detergent. Detergent. Powder. Yeah, for washing your clothes, right? Mm-hmm. I use that for pretty much everything except my body, mm-hmm. and then I use the bar soap for my body, bar for my body. Okay. And I, I discovered that by not for having shampoo anything. for yeah. fa- no face wash. Yeah. Just everything. Just use one the bar. bar soap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah, and then yeah. and then it works out really great, you know, because yeah. I can get a new bar and they last forever because. With it, what I didn't like about uh, this, the, 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 what is that called? The lotion, what's that called? The, the hand pump. The, the soap in the bottle or whatever. Oh, the, body wash. Body wash. The reason why I didn't like that is because it would run out and I right. kind of wouldn't know and I wouldn't have enough. And I, right. and I just, it's, it sounds stupid, right? This, this, sometimes when you get to the details, it sounds stupid. But when you experience it in your own life, it's interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, believe it or not, it's fucking interesting. It's like, yeah. it's one other thing you figure it out. And then... That leads to other discoveries in your life. Right. So don't think of it as just the soap. Right. right. It's like you're, you're, you're discovering these simple things, and then those lead to bigger things, like what oh, you yeah. really want to do with your life even, you know, yeah. I think. That's what I value, uh, in, you know, just in closing, wrapping it up, but that's what I value about our friendship is that uh, through our conversations, you've, you've put planted little seeds in my mind that, that didn't sprout right away, but that kept growing over time and then it and then it kind of blossomed and and it might have been not maybe the intention but yeah. it totally helped me so i think yeah, you gotta have man. people in your life you yeah. know you question your own beliefs but then also be around people that will help you question those beliefs and no one wants to be told that they're wrong or that they're what they're doing is is, is wrong but when you approach it like you're when you know, want to offer some outside observation like take that in and and, and and let it grow in your mind and think on it because if someone says something that they observe about you then most likely like it is something that is worth your time to consider and so one thing i've learned about you know even though i was still a home free lifestyle still on that process of stripping everything away like our through our conversations it's like oh i'm still fucking have too much stuff 
Like, oh, really? I thought oh, I was cleaning yeah. the house out, and yeah. I thought it was pretty fucking bare looking around. Yeah. But there's still more shit in the back that I need to, you know, get out. So, <laughs> so because you challenged me in, in different yeah. ways and gave me different, you know, perspectives, it's it's something I really appreciate because I'm still on that journey of clearing out more nice. programming. Nice. But I've come a long way just, you know, just from your kind of couple observations here and there. Nice. So it's nice. Definitely helped I, me. I got the bar of soap idea because I stayed at a friend of mine's house who was totally bald. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have any shampoo or conditioner. <laughs> so what? Yeah, and all of a sudden I realized, well, why do I have this shit? <laughs> yeah. I don't conditioner? Like this shit. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, when do conditioner? guys fucking have conditioner? Yeah. I just bought a like, like knee jerk reaction. Like, right. I don't oh, buy. Oh, I have to have conditioner. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't use shaving cream. Yeah. I just have a razor. Yeah, and all yeah. you have to do is, if you want to shave without a razor, just shave a little bit slower, like little, little like movements. Yeah. And then just, you'll see. What people try to do is they try to do that long thing like yeah. in the ad, yeah, where yeah. the guy goes all the way around his chin. Yeah. Just try it like slow, 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 slow. It's the same speed in the end. Like right. it's no big deal. Right. And then you shave without any of that crap. Right. And then you have one less thing you have to worry about running out, buying, right. buying more, moving, putting in your bag. Right. You know, just one less thing to bring on a business trip, one right. less thing in your life. Right. And then it's that like, shit is gold, man. Right, like, that shit is gold. Because right. as MGTOW, we're kind of figuring out the whole world and what's going on and our place in it and, and the changes we want to see. But then on a Ronin or you know Spartan level, yeah. it's like, yeah. man, you guys, we have too much shit right now. Like, clear all that shit out. Because the simple life allows you just to be more in your truth, to have a clearer mind, yeah. to really dig deeper because you're not being cluttered with all this bullshit. And, and you find the, the things you do care about. Like I care right. about like a laptop with a good battery, a, right. a phone, hard drive, Internet. and um, sunscreen. I need yeah. sunscreen. So that's another, that's a key thing for me. Yeah. I'm always going to have sunscreen because I put it on every morning because right. otherwise you're going to get cancer because I surfed my whole life. Too much time in the sun. Right. No fucking way. I'm not going to get skin cancer like my friends. Right. So I got, but that is important to me. But I discovered that through... Stripping away. Yeah, through stripping away. I, thought, yeah. I threw that away. And I'm like, get sunburned. I know, no, no. Okay, need sunscreen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you learned that lesson. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. All right, guys. Cheers, man.